Let's turn to the broader markets right now. For that, we want to bring in Victoria Fernandez, who is chief market strategist at Crossmark Global Investments, and Gunjan Banerjee, who's the lead writer for the Wall Street Journal's live markets coverage, also a CNBC contributor. And, and Gunjan, let's just talk very quickly about what's been happening with all this optimism that's out there. You think that people are really embracing a bull market here. Becky, I think the hottest trade out there right now is betting that this bull market is just getting started. We are seeing that across the market where people are really piling in. They're piling into stocks. They're piling into options that would pay out if the rally continued. We recently saw call options activity tied to the S&P 500 index hit one of the highest levels on record. The same hold, holds true for many of these tech stocks these AI stocks. So we're really seeing people embrace this. And I think momentum certainly seems like it's on the market side right now. And people are trying to ride that higher, whether or not they're actually optimistic about the market or not. They want to profit from these short-term gains. Victoria, you say not so quickly, right? You're a little more concerned? I am a little bit more concerned, Becky, and I don't deny that we're seeing some positive effects in the market and that people want to take advantage of this. What concerns me is when you look at some of the other elements that historically have said there's going to be a downturn or we're going to have recession, 14 months of declining leading economic indicators at a pace that we have never had without going into recession. Declining M2, rising rates. Um, you look at the consumer and they're still strong, but maybe not as much as they were before. There's a lot of different elements out there, the inverted yield curve, all of these things, liquidity issues. So it tells me that you can still be in the market. We don't want to tell people get out of the market and don't take advantage of what's going on, but I think you have to be cautious when you're doing that. And I think people are, one of the things that tells us that, look at flow into money markets versus equity ETFs. Money market flows have outnumbered four to one since last October and eight to one since March. So I think people are in the market, but they're being a little bit cautious. I think that's probably a good playbook for the second half of this year. And maybe they just are waiting for a pullback given the huge gains. Exactly. If you missed what happened in the first half, eh, nobody wants to feel like they're the dummy who buys at the top. <laughs> That's true. And so I think that's part of why a lot of people, when we say we're a little bit bearish, we think that there is going to be a pullback later this year as all of these elements start to flow through the economy. We're not saying don't be in the market, but we're saying maybe don't be all in some of these names that have been the majority of the run so far this year. Find some other elements, whether it's in healthcare, whether it's in Staples, General Mills reports uh, today, a name like that, or Kimberly Clark, different things like that that can give give you some optionality in the market, but you're still being a little bit more conservative on where your allocation is. If you were waiting for a pullback, if you think one's coming, how big of a pullback would you say before you said, okay, jump in, this is it? You don't think it's going back to the lows of last fall? I don't think it's going back to the lows. If you had asked me that a couple months ago, I would have said there was a pretty good chance that we would. But I think we're seeing the consumer and some of the underlying elements in the economy strong enough that we get a pullback. Is it 5, 7, 10 percent? Maybe somewhere in that range. Uh, but I think it's going to be choppy. I think you're labor market is strong enough, but inflation is high enough that I can't make a strong, high conviction call that it's going to be a complete soft landing. So I would be prepared to see a pullback, high single digits, low double digits. And that's an opportunity maybe to switch some of your allocations at that point. Hey, Gunjan, one of the confounding features of this has been the VIX, that low volatility that we've seen throughout all of that. You expect that that will continue this summer? I think a lot of traders are taking a look at their calendars, deciding to take those beach vacations right now, because I think there aren't a lot of catalysts the next few months that could kind of move the needle. And people are not so concerned about spending or inflation data because so many of these data releases have already come in so strong. I think one word of caution is that we are seeing people position for more volatility in the back half of the year. Um, just re recently, we saw big bets tied to the VIX that would profit if the gauge jumped significantly to as high as 30 or 40. It's been hovering around 14. So you are seeing people say, hey, maybe things will kind of be calm for the next few months, but pick up in the autumn.